it's uh, how you find meanings and metaphors in one thing and another and it's this joining them it's then making something as as a metaphoric image uh, as another uh, meaning that is produced from that that i have found uh, as a kind of main principle of my work particularly in the last uh, two and a half decades cruel face uh, this is a thing called cruel and tender these throw away broken pieces you know allow me to kind of make connections but there's also the you know whole history of the the playful spontaneous you know connecting dismembering joining uh and then a kind of playful narrative comes out of it and sometimes this wonderful things you know happened uh, as i said i i saw this young girl i said oh but this looks like my mother exactly like her portrait The photograph of the dead man killed in the streets of Bombay, it's haunting in itself, but it also uh, allowed me to explore the placement or location of it uh, in relationship to an environmental experience, an experience of installation art. ये दोनों एक साइज बैठेंगे ट्वेंटी वन एंड हाफ यही बनाएंगे नहीं फिर ये ये दो अलग विट्रीन है और फिर टेबल है आई थिंक दैट द मेलन कलर ऑफ दैट फिगर एंड द एब्सट्रैक्शन ऑफ मल्टीपल डिफरेंट स्ट्रक्चर्स दैट इट इनहेबिट्स और द स्पेस इनहेबिट्स अलाउज द व्यूअर एंड हियर द व्यूअर बिकम्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट in negotiating that kind of space which memorial occupies so um, actually this photograph is the negative of the photograph i've been using so all black has become white and this figure who was wearing a white kurta has become black now i'm turning it back into white so it's a form of you know like surrounded by this figure is that the ground is you know erupting and then i plan to put some uh, paper mache into some of this once this is done so that's 
फिर इसको हल्का सा देख भाल जैसे ऐसे कर लेंगे आएगा थोड़ी देर वो 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 जो बड़ा फ्रेम बना रहे हो हाँ वो जो पचपन इंच बाय तिरपन तिरपन सिक्सटी हाँ पाँच फुट बाय साढ़े चार फुट वाला ज़्यादा चौड़ा वाला उससे कम जो है छोटा जो है अच्छा जिसमें वो वो कटा हुआ है अंदर नो इस ऑल विच वॉज स्क्रेप्ड एंड यू नो दैट दिस इज द आयरन प्राइम यू सी दिस कलर इट इज वेरी ब्राउन नो आई कैन पुट इन आई वॉन्टेड इट टू ड्राई अभी भी थोड़ा गीला है हल्का सा उसमें रेड डाल सकते हैं देन आई टेल हिम टू सार्ट बिकॉज दिस इज द रेड ऑक्साइड दिस ग्लास इफेक्ट आई वॉज ट्राइंग टू गेट दिस इज द टफन ग्लास विथ ब्रेक क्या कर रहे थे I am still to work something out. I've seen it before. I think a couple of times, perhaps in two different spaces as well. And uh, this time, there is a completely new dimension to it. And, uh, this aspect of uh, of this accumulation of uh, of the throwaway right from the beginning you know has sort of interested me What's very exciting is that you see something, of course, then it doesn't work. You throw it away. 
it is meant to be thrown away. But when it gets recycled and, you know, surprisingly, very excitingly done, like I came and found this black uh, corrugated roofing material and uh, just looked sort of so flexible and it made uh, one of my finest garments called uh, uh, Flow. They put these things and then they tie them tightly with this uh, rubber thing. So they get stacked up like that. So I got very interested in the idea of this being stacked up like that. So I made a metal frame about uh, more than the height of this, about 15 feet high. And in uh, Ravindra Bhavan, I had that. And within that, I kept uh, pu putting this inside. And I took this to my studio. And in, in about six months time, it had already by itself kept on getting pressed and from that when it was at the very top it came down almost by one and a half feet. Those maybe hundred or so coke cans and various other sprite cans etc become an unbelievable mass of, uh, of excess and so obviously this is in a sense fake but it, it sort of reflects in, in one sense, in very real terms, what we think of as this success of consumerism, of these extraordinary landfills, which have all this sort of garbage in you know hundreds and thousands of them. So in the same photograph, uh, by uh, using the digital tool, I'm able to then uh, kind of create a false image, because if you look at the data and look at it closely, then the same coke can keeps repeating and the same way it's sort of broken. When you see a mannequin in a shop window, you don't look at it twice. You certainly don't think about it. But here it takes its place like a piece of sculpture. And even the attributes of the mannequin, which is neutral, are transformed and suddenly each one has a certain character.
every time I have a, a wish or a desire to to counter that that excess, which became finally uh, all those things found in the dustbin or has found objects, become uh, images of of beauty and sensuality, and again a need to then counter that by producing this body of work called postmortem, so that it then removes the exterior, removes the garment, and then you come to to the body and the body here again is a neutral mannequin and how I can enter and splice and open that up. ये बहुत ही तो 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 तो
ये ये स्पिन तो बहुत बढ़िया है जैसे कि ये हां ये इतना हार्ड हो जाएगा ऐड हो अगर निकलने का टाइम ऑटोमेटिकली इधर सामने आ जाएगा हां ये पीछे में यहां भी ऐड होगा ये हां वो वो तो ऐड होगा पर मेनली जो ये सीधा जा रहा है इसको कैसे पीछे वो एक्चुअली इसका ऊपर का एड है इसका नीचे से तो ऑलमोस्ट लाइन में आ जाएगा आई नो फाइन दिस ये सब दिखेगा नहीं बट लेट अस ट्राई टू मेक इट एज मच एज द डायनामिक ऑफ दिस For me, uh, Ram Kinkar Bej is an exceptional modernist artist. What fascinates me about him is the way that he was both uh, a painter and a sculptor with equal intensity and passion. And his other interest was to do not only sets for theatre but also direct plays. this is a more ambitious crossover where from installation art from making sculpture i am making sets making props which then become part of what is called promenade theater <laughs> ये तो एक हाइब्रिड हाइब्रिड रास्तों का भूल भुलैया है ये मुझे कई दिशाओं में ले जाता है जीवन एक गति है मूर्त से अमूर्त गति जारी है
छब्बीस हो या सैतीस घंटे में सौ हो या हजार घर दो हर घंटे को कुछ करके कुछ पर के of the structures or the objects or the forms that I make are all uh, not uh, sculpture as sculpture as, as, a, as an entity, but they're all uh, in parts which are then dismantled and put together. So I kind of recycle the very uh, environment that my studio has, which, uh, as I said, fragments of uh, lots of work which just lie there and, in fact, uh, uh, whether that's a sad story or not, but uh, you know the objects uh, connected with installation art gradually start uh, uh, even disintegrating. This is one of the beds from 12 bed ward and they are made up of all <coughs> completely discarded shoes and it is the discarded sole of the shoe uh, that has the resale value for the waste picker. And I was very moved by the fact that the brand name is removed and only the soles with their very interesting designs, both on the feet as well as inside, uh, reveal themselves through a kind of great abstraction. This uh, work was also part uh, of the exhibition called uh, uh, Trash, in which I made photographs. And I continue to use the throwaway or the trash object in my uh, more recent work called Gaga Waka, uh, where uh, uh, throw away old uh, belts, all kinds of even even shoes uh, at the top of them uh, I made uh, garments of. The next move away from that, uh, that very uh, powerful performative imagery to uh, construct again photographs but uh, in a completely uh, different scale 
uh, an intimate scale, which is the work that I am doing at, at the moment, uh, using the potsherds uh, from the excavation of Muzeris in the small village called Patanam. <laughs> One of the things which some where it will be composed in a manner and I could just ask Girish to shoot it from above as if you know it is a, a pictorial image and, and straight. But it's what uh, by different angles and uh, perspectives and you don't know uh, what the scale of, of the objects are. But maybe at this end, just a little more light. Like there, yeah. Yeah. So that it's sort of, mm -hmm. of course, in that it's very small. I'm sure when you see it is a larger print. Mm -hmm. But uh, Some more. It, it's as if, like very minimally you can see it, at least in, in your camera. Yeah. I could hardly see the end. It was as if it had gone into blackness. I, I just told him, let's see how it looks from this side. And then, then in fact, only very recently, I said they were running on, on the <coughs> parallel to the, the stone here, which I wanted a connection. Then I said, let's try it going above. And so we've got a whole kind of string of lines going. And then now with this, it's created a, a scale, which you, you, you yeah. can't tell, eh? you know, that it's actually as if it's like suddenly three feet up or something. So bring quite a lot of glow to this uh, fiber optic. Okay. Let's see how it works. Well, one very important uh, feature of this house, uh, in a sense, as you enter, is uh, this carpet that I'm standing on. And this is a carpet that uh, Amrita Shergil uh, designed uh, for her studio. And it's, the, it's in that studio that I was born and lived there uh, for very many years. So this uh, central, uh, shall I say, uh, space, so social space, uh, has uh, been used in very many different ways and it has actually uh, created a whole uh, kind of ambience and environment particularly uh, after my mother died when I started running workshops. Uh, this painting that you see here uh, is in fact uh, done in memory of my mother and it was a series that I started and I titled it The Discreet Charm of the Bourgeoisie this material uh, was uh, part of the bedroom of the house uh, in Shimla uh, where I was born and uh, this material, the curtains, which was also part of the bedspread, my mother brought here. So this has a very, as I said, ev evocative relationship from childhood you have slept on, on this bed with this particular design and in fact it has uh, a two-way design where you can see uh, here uh, the uh, more clearly this dancing figure. So uh, this kind of arabesque uh, uh, design uh, coming from, from Shantiniketan all the way to Simla and here in Kasoli. My relationship to my family uh, is actually uh, for me uh, very much foregrounded uh, with my grandfather, Umrao Singh Shergil. Uh, and what fascinated me, because uh, he lived uh, 
uh, in the adjoining house in, in Simla uh, and uh, he was uh, 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 a very uh, majestic uh, character and uh, his own room uh, was a kind of laboratory. It was a fascinating space with hundreds of books, uh, with a carpentry table, with a telescope, with uh, then a dark room for uh, his uh, printing photographs. When you excavate something in a dusty cupboard, that you start finding a certain kind of a point of view, a certain aspect of uh, attitude and structuring which is there in the photograph. Wading through the hundreds of photographs, I realized that Umrao Singh was quite a complex uh, photographer and the way that he staged and in a sense performed both for himself and made his family perform. Now in my retake uh, of his photographs, which I call the series the retake of Amrita, I could dwell into the family by what I say that the digital allows you to make a photograph which is telling a lie in the sense an analog picture which Umrao Singh took were posed but they were real, that these are now reconstruction and these allowed me to engage with the reference to narrative painting which I was very much engaged right through the 1980s. In, in this case, as I said, there was already the narrative impulse and this narrative impulse, a very strong feature of this series retake of Amrita, has a, a very complex relationship uh, between the photographer that is Umrao Singh and that is Amrita Shergill's father uh, and Amrita Shergill and uh, a very uh, rich, uh, visually rich, uh, intense uh, tableau is created by their being in Paris and in a sense Umrao Singh uh, creates uh, these f uh, staged photographs using uh, the kind of bourgeois interiors of his flat as the set as it were.
Well, from uh, the relationship of father and daughter in a kind of sensuous and almost erotic uh, binding or bonding, there is the other aspect that both uh, father and uh, and the daughter, um, Rao Singh and Amrita, uh, share is uh, uh, a melancholy. Uh, um, Rao Singh uh, spoke about this melancholy and in fact he even titled uh, this photograph My Misery and My Manuscript. If you expand the, the narrative to the larger part of the family, uh, her mother uh, was uh, a deeply melancholic uh, person, a Hungarian mother, and uh, in fact in her lifetime, Amrita's lifetime, uh, attempted suicide. So there is that, uh, that deep angst uh, which uh, you know, exists in this family uh, as they also you know, passionately work through their intellect, through their creativity. This crossing over from uh, the Shergill uh, uh, project, from doing an oil painting to then doing the Shergill uh, archive as construction and boxes, and then moving to the digital manipulated photographs, and finally uh, to its representation in video, actually spans uh, the different aesthetic uh, engagements uh, which I have been doing for the last. 20-25 years. I feel that the kind of sustenance that I've got to uh, go on making art and making art with many different trajectories I think really comes back from moment in, in my youth which I call May 68 a movement of uh, of exploration and uh, somehow uh, some deep-seated uh, energy of uh, constantly sort of questioning myself, you know, gives me uh, a sense of uh, both uh, questions, because I question myself, but it also seems to propel me in ways which are sometimes unexpected.